Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayer for Tuesday, September 1st. Today is the commemoration of Joshua. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the setting of the sun, and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. The Lord Almighty, grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for the evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our constant companion on the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope among us, that we may recognize you as you are revealed in the scriptures and in the breaking of the bread. Grant this for your name's sake. Amen. Clap your hands, all peoples. Shout to God with loud joy, songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is to be feared, a great King over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth, sing praises with a psalm. God reigns over the nations, God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples gather as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. Our New Testament reading tonight is from Ephesians chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and who are faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will so that, that we, who were the first to hope in Christ, might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it, to the praise of his glory. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, which are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he, was ra when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he has put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And once again, today is the day we commemorate the life of Joshua. Joshua, the son of Nun, was a minister and successor of Moses, and the leader of the people of Israel who led them through the dry bed at the Jordan. He was first mentioned in Exodus 17 when he was chosen by Moses to fight the Amalekites, whom he defeated in a brilliant military victory. 
He was placed in charge of the Tent of Meeting, Exodus 33.11, and was a member of the tribal representatives sent to survey the land of Canaan, Numbers 13.8. Later he was appointed by God to succeed Moses as Israel's commander-in-chief. And he also directed the Israelites' capture of Jericho. He is remembered especially for his final address to the Israelites, in which he challenged them to serve God faithfully, Joshua 24.1-27, and concluding with the memorable words, As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Our Book of Concord reading tonight is our continuation of, of Article 5 in the Apology of the Augsburg Confession, beginning in paragraph 62. <clears throat> now when the grounds of this case have been understood the distinction between the law and the promises or the gospel it will be easy to resolve the adversary's objections for they quote passages about the law and works and leave out passages about the promises but a final reply can be made to all opinions about the law namely that the law cannot be kept without christ and that if civil works are done without Christ, they do not please God. Therefore, when works are commended, it is necessary to add that faith is required. They are commended because of faith. They are the fruit and testimonies of faith. Ambiguous and dangerous cases produce many and various solutions, for the judgment of the ancient poet is true, and unjust cause, being in itself sick, requires skillfully applied remedies. In just and sure cases, one or two explanations derived from the sources correct all things that seem to offend. This happens also in our case here. For the rule I have just quoted explains all the passages that are quoted about the law and works. We acknowledge that Scripture teaches the law in some places and the gospel in other places, i.e. the free promise of forgiveness of sins for Christ's sake. But our adversaries absolutely abolish the free promise when they deny that faith justifies and when they teach that we receive forgiveness of sins and reconciliation because of love and our works. If forgiveness of sin depends on our works, it is completely uncertain. The promise will be abolished, therefore we tell godly minds to consider the promises and we teach about free forgiveness of sins and about reconciliation, which happens through faith in Christ. Afterward, we add also the teaching of the law. It is necessary to distinguish these things aright, as Paul says in 2 Timothy 2.15. We must see what Scripture says about the law and what it says about the promises, for it praises works in such a way that it does not remove the free promise. Good works are to be done because of God's command and for the exercise of faith, confessing the faith and giving thanks. Good works must be done for these reasons. They are done in the flesh, which is not as yet entirely renewed. The flesh hinders the Holy Spirit's motives and adds some of its uncleanness to the works. Yet, because of Christ, they are holy divine works, sacrifices, and acts according to the rule of Christ, who in this way displays his kingdom before this world. For in these works he sanctifies hearts and represses the devil. In order to retain the gospel among people, he openly sets the confession of saints against the kingdom of the devil, and in our weakness declares his power. Consider the dangers, labors, and sermons of the Apostle Paul of Athanasius of Augustine and the rest who taught the churches. These deeds are holy works and true sacrifices acceptable to God. They are Christ's battles, Colossians 2.15, through which he repressed the devil and drove him away from those who believed. David's labors in waging wars and in his home government are holy works, true sacrifices, and battles fought by God. They defend the people who had God's word against the devil, in order that the knowledge of God might not be entirely extinguished on earth. We think this way about every good work in the humblest callings and in private affairs. Through these works, Christ celebrates his victory over the devil, just as the distribution of alms by the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 16.1, was a holy work, a sacrifice and battle of Christ against the devil, who labors so that nothing may be done to praise God. To demean such works, the confession of doctrine, sufferings, works of love, suppression of the flesh, would be to demean the outward rule of Christ's kingdom among people. Here also we add something about rewards and merits. We teach that rewards have been offered and promised for the works of believers. We teach that good works have merit, not for the forgiveness of sins, or for grace, or for justification. For these we receive only through faith. 
but for other rewards, bodily and spiritual, in this life and after this life. For Paul says in 1 Corinthians 3.8, each will receive his wages according to his labor. There will be different rewards according to different labors, but forgiveness of sins is given alike and equal to all people, just as Christ is one and is offered freely to all who believe that for his sake their sins are forgiven. Therefore, forgiveness of sins and justification are received only through faith, not because of any works. This is clear because of the terrors of conscience, because none of our works can turn away God's wrath, as Paul clearly says in Romans 5.1. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained access by faith. Because faith makes sons of God, it also makes co-heirs with Christ. Because our works, because by our works we do not merit justification, through which we are made sons of God and co-heirs with Christ. We do not merit eternal life by our works. Faith receives it because faith justifies us and has rec a reconciled God. But eternal life is due to the justified. According to the passage in Romans 8.30, those whom he justified, he also glorified. Paul in Ephesians 6.2 tells us the commandment about honoring parents by mentioning the reward added to that commandment. He does not mean that obedience to parents justifies us before God. But when obedience happens in those who have been justified, it merits other great rewards. God puts his saints to work in various ways and often holds back the rewards of works righteousness. He does this so that they may learn not to trust in their own righteousness and may learn to seek God's will rather than the rewards. This can be seen with Job, Christ, and other saints. And many psalms teach us about this. They console us against the happiness of the wicked, as Psalm 37.1 says, Be not envious. Christ says in Matthew 5.10, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. By these praises of good works, believers are undoubtedly moved to do good works. Meanwhile, the teaching of repentance is also proclaimed against the godless, whose works are wicked. God's wrath, which he has threatened against all who do not repent, is displayed. Therefore we praise and require good works, and show many reasons why they ought to be done. And that is where we will leave off tonight. We now join together in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we praise your fathomless mercy with which you take pity on sinful men. All the prophets and apostles preach this to us in your holy word. Let our hope not be put to shame when we pray to you for all who suffer at this time. For behold, the evil foe has become mighty, and the great ones of this world rule often with unrighteousness. O God, who in former times caused your saints to overcome injustice, strengthen also today all who stand in need of your help. Grant that all prisoners of war, held as slaves, and sacrifices of earthly wrath may return to their home. Stand by all refugees and homeless people, and be their justice. Be a father to the widows and orphans with your strong protection. Go through bars and fences to those who are imprisoned for the sake of your name. Strengthen them for a good witness, and let them not waver in the confession of your name. Teach us through their example and the example of so many holy martyrs to be ever watchful of the confession of your Son's name. Let us not be put to shame when the evil foe lays his hand on us. But if it is your will that we be persecuted for confessing Jesus as our Lord and only Savior, then support us in your grace that we may withstand all trials and grant us peaceful rest. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, your servant Joshua led the children of Israel through the waters of the Jordan River into a land flowing with milk and honey. As our Joshua, lead us, we pray, through the waters of our baptism into the promised land of our eternal home, where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good night.